Hello folks, Denobi2 here. Thank you for joining me once again on a visual tour. Uh, this is going to be the module case update. It has been six months. It's been six months since I've had the module case and I've had several of you reach out and ask uh, what I think of the module cases so far. And I do have some pros. I have quite a bit of pros owning the module cases and I also have a few cons. So. Let's get right down to it. So I pre-ordered my module cases uh, at the end of 2018, December 2018, and I was very well aware that it would take anywhere from four to six months for delivery. So I was aware of the shipping time. I also was aware that because uh, I did reach out to the owner, his name is Brian. I also did reach out to the owner uh, on the one six scale display cases, which uh, at the time I knew he did share that they were going to be uh, announced um, and they were going to measure a certain uh, size, height, and dimension. So, so a lot of folks did comment, why didn't I just wait for the one six scale module cases? Well, before I had pre-ordered the module cases on December 18th. I had done about anywhere between uh, four to six months of research. Uh, and there was not a lot of coverage on YouTube or reviews on the module cases. Uh, the only thing I had to go off of was uh, a video from Red Titan and uh, several posts and some comments and so forth. But the website, module case, is highly detailed, so they're able to provide me a lot of uh, uh, specs, diagrams, and so forth. So I had to do a lot of homework. This was going to be a big purchase, and I knew that the 1-6 scale displays were probably not going to work for me. Very simple. I needed to invest in a display case that was going to be future-proof. And what I mean by future-proof is that I need something that could adapt with the years. And I felt that if I bottlenecked myself with a module case that measured about 19 inches of height, um, it would limit the amount of things I can display. So I did some work. I, I even created some diagrams. I'm like, okay, so this is what the D120 is going to measure, 25 inch height, so forth, 24 depth. All right, so I can, I felt comfortable and confident that with the larger module cases, uh, that it was going to serve my need. Uh, I was going to enable me to uh, display the larger pieces because I am mainly a Hot Toys collector. I'm not so much a statue. I have a couple statue pieces and the one big giant statue piece I bought, I ended up returning it anyway. It was such a disaster, the, uh, the Blitzway Astronaut. I don't, I don't have that anymore. The Blitzway Astronaut was one of the reasons I chose the larger size because uh, the Blitzway Astronaut was, uh, was displayed and showcased uh, San Diego Comic-Con 2018. I was there. I saw it. I fell in love with it. I'm like, oh my God, if I'm going to buy a giant piece, a giant statue piece, I want to make sure that I'm able to uh, to take care of it. Um, I'm lazy. I don't want to spend a lot of time dusting, maintaining statue pieces. I, I've seen I've seen what happens when you get lazy, when you when you own a statue piece and uh, the dust settles in and you're using air vacs, I, I, don't, I didn't want to deal with any of that stuff. So the Blitz, so the Blitzway Astronaut was one of the reasons I, I ended up uh, choosing the larger size module cases. And the second reason was Hot Toys. I, I don't trust Hot Toys when it comes. All right, I should clarify what I mean by I do not trust Hot Toys. What I mean by that is that I don't know where the company will head towards the future. I don't know if if um, I, I don't know if they're going to keep making uh, one six scale vehicles, uh, larger pieces like the Hulkbuster, the DeLorean. Um, 
and, and so forth. Right now, they, they seem to have calmed down, but what if down the road, Hot Toys decides to release another one six scale vehicle? I wanna make sure that I have the display, the environment to fully house a vehicle. Uh, the DeLorean um, in the module case looks great. Um, so I had all these collectible pieces lined up before I placed my pre-order, I'm like, oh God, I, I, I have the, the, the sail barge, it's huge. I want to be able to properly display the sail barge and create my diorama. I have the DeLorean, the Hulkbuster, the Blitzway statue. I need the larger module cases so that I can future-proof my collection. So as the years go by and Hot Toys decides to release, I don't know, some fantastic uh, vehicle or giant figure that I'm not bottlenecking myself, into a module case that's designed specifically for 1-6 scale. And mind you, the 1-6 scale module cases, the height, it's 19 inches. So a Hulk, uh, the Hulk Hot Toys, it's just, it's gonna just about scrape the top and the, and the Hulk Buster, the diecast Hulk Buster, does not even fit. You're gonna have to use a separate um, uh, case. You, can, you may have to use like the D120 on its side and, and the D120 is what I'm using the, on, on its side, a horizontal, vertical, whatever. It's what I'm using for my NASA uh, uh, spaceships right there as you can see. Why I did not go with the 16L even though I knew before I pre-ordered that, that, uh, that the company that they were going to release. I guess I've mentioned a couple pros already. I, it's the size, the, the depth, it's the, the confidence a future proof in uh, my collection. The cases are classy. I wanted, because it was such a big purchase, I, 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 I did not want to invest in a permanent fixture. And what that f folks in the industry would not, may not know, permanent fixture is something that gets attached to the home. So if I ever decide to sell the home, uh, it stays with the home. I did not want to do that. If I was going to spend a lot of money, a couple thousand dollars, uh, and if I ever decide to move a few years down the road, I want to take these module cases with me. So that was one of the, the biggest reasons um, with the module cases. I wanted something classy. I wanted something uh, that I could take with me if, some, if I ever decide to sell my home. Uh, permanent. I had looked in, trust me, the 2017, 2018, uh, I had looked into permanent fixtures. And a permanent fixture would, would have been just as much. Hiring a contractor, get a design. I thought a permanent fixture would have made... The, the, the actual studio look really classy, but I'm like, no, it's gonna be a lot of money and I wanna be able to take this with me. And the module cases, uh, for the hassle they were installing, uh, once you figured it out, it was actually pretty easy to install, even though my, my, my back kinda, kinda went out. The biggest pro is that uh, the website says that it's airtight, no dust. Yes, 100%, when these things are sealed, it is a dust-free environment. Not only is it dust-free, like the air in there um, does not move. So uh, I'll give you a perfect example where I've unboxed a couple of the Hot Toy figures and you know that brand new Hot Toy smell, that brand new action figure smell. I've unboxed uh, a couple of figures and just thrown them in there, sealed them up. And then uh, a few weeks later, I've, I've entered the chamber because once you re re remove the uh, the plexiglass you can still smell it's like wow it really does contain it versus my uh, my, my my hot toys iron man that are displayed in the uh, hall of armor they're exposed to the elements and and so forth so that is definitely one of the biggest plus definitely um, i can vouch it is pretty much airtight even though there's little tiny holes in the back of the module cases uh, that let in the wire. It is still, for the good part, 95%, 99, pretty much airtight. That that right there, the airtight and the prevention of the dust was one of the things that uh, attracted me to the module cases. And being at six months, it is a dust-free environment in there. So um, I can 100% vouch for that. Uh, the space uh, inside it gives you a lot to work with. Um, if you have a cr another another pro is that if you have that uh, creative bug of displaying, creating dioramas, and, and so forth, um, there's plenty of space in there to adjust the figures to pose. Um, you're not limited by your imagination, and that was one of the things. As as great as a DTOF is, 
Uh, DTOFs are good uh, for the price point. There's nothing wrong with a DTOF. If you're on a limited budget and you want to focus more of your, 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 your toy money towards uh, hot toys, the DTOF serves purpose. But the DTOFs for me were always a temporary solution. Uh, they were never airtight. Um, they, they, to me, I felt that, that's, that the amount of space they took wasn't properly maximized. If you stacked them together, I felt like you were losing space in between when you would take a DTOF and, and connect them together. There was still that one gap of space that could be utilized. I want to be able to utilize all the space. And if I'm not using the space, I want to have that space sitting there so that uh, down the road, if I decide to get a giant piece or create a diorama or something, it's there. Uh, because the, the D20s are so huge, I've seen uh, online folks popping in flat panel TVs because flat panel TVs are so cheap right now compared to what they were 10 years ago. They've created live dioramas where you can stick a TV in the back and then you can switch the background, to, you know, and you can create the Infinity War scene and so forth. I, I don't have the pictures right now, but that's one of the options that, that, that you can do. So the DTOFs, I only have five DTOFs in my room right now. They will go away. Um, I'm probably going to keep two, and I'll and I'll use them specifically for for for, for action figures, Marvel Legends, SH Figure Arts, and so forth. But when it comes to the Hot Toys or one six scale figures or vehicles, definitely the Maja case because there's so oh here's another thing because there's so much space inside the Maja case. Uh, you if if with a little bit of creativity and ingenuity, you can actually hide or use the actual hot toy boxes for display stands. So this was something that I knew I was gonna do. I'm like, well, these things are about 24 inches deep, 25 inches in height. Uh, how, do you dis how do you maximize the space? And one of the things that I came up with was creating the, the, the stadium display where you can stack up the hot toy boxes and have the figures lined up in a stadium kind of like a stadium type seat and where you're able to, we're able to use the space to hide the hot toy boxes and prop up the figures. So that's another good plus. I really like that. And again, you can customize, change the displays in the way that, that you feel comfortable with. Did I mention how classy they look? I hosted a Christmas party last year and I had a lot of work colleagues. Actually, it was the first time that I had ever had a lot of people in the studio. I probably had about 10 people in this room and they were all simply blown away. They they really commented on on how classy, on how impressive the collection were. They were just flabbergasted. And that was one of the things too that I'd wanted. I wanted to invest in a display case that really helped propel the uh, the actual figures. Um, there's nothing again to me when you put an, uh, a a Hot Toys figure in a D-top, they look okay, but something about a black background and the way that they're designed and so forth with the actual peg lightings with the actual peg led lightings from the ceiling it just makes the figures pop so to me it's kind of like the frosting on the cake yeah that was a really unique experience i kind of regretted not filming it i just i had never had people in here that were not educated in the world of hot toys and the fact that i invited a lot of work colleagues here and and they saw the room and they just had no idea of this world of hot toys um, and seeing their expressions on the face they were up here for about an hour um, that was unique i kind of regretted not filming that that would have been a really cool video because if you've never seen a hot toys figure or action figures that are this lifelike and sculpted uh, seeing the expressions on their faces and the way that they were displayed in the module cases really really did pop and yeah, I, I, I kind of regret it not, not filming that. That was pretty, that was a unique experience and I had fun and had a Christmas party here. So that was, that was pretty neat. Um, and then after that, I, I ran off to Japan. All right, all right, let's get, let's get down to the cons. There's a, there's a few cons here, right? There's a, there's a few cons. So let's start off, let's go back to the one thing, the, let's go back to the main reason that I chose the module case, and it was it, it was future proofing. Future proofing mean the ability to anticipate my collection uh, as it changes, evolves, and so forth. Pieces would come in, pieces would go out. Um, 
and so forth. Future proofing. Well, the future proofing was a pro on that side, but the future proofing, because I have no knowledge of what the future will bring, also now becomes a con. On my recent trip to, to Japan, I bought quite a bit of light boxes. I love, I love, I love the Hot Toys light boxes. They, if you work them in just right into your collection, it pops. Not only does it look good, but it also provides uh, additional light in to help uh, accent your collection and your figures. So I am a big, big fan of the light boxes. Uh, they don't require a lot of power, five volts and so forth. And I wanna incorporate them and it looks like Hot Toys, they'll be releasing more light boxes throughout the years because they're making a killing off of it. And, and collectors like me, we love them. Um, but because I did not know when I built my Maju cases that I would be now adding light boxes to them, now it's become a curse because I did not add power sources. I did not add USB power sources. And you're probably saying, what's the big deal, Denobi? Just to add the cords. The problem is, is that the two outlets I have behind my cases are all being maximized. Uh, I had to run an extension cord from around the room to add, to add additional USB outlets. Not only did I have to daisy chain more outlets to the Maju cases, but then I also had to go in and modify the Maju cases and, and be creative and do MacGyver tricks to run the USB cords to the back because these things weigh a ton. These things are extremely heavy. And if you did not preload these things with USB outlets or just even regular outlets to get the actual power source into the module case is extremely difficult and it's extremely challenging. And it took me one day just to rig uh, the Avengers Endgame light box and the light box uh, here where uh, the Hulkbuster is holding. Um, I had to go in, I had to cut a larger hole so that I can fish wire, I had to create, I had to pop in the extension cord to the USB. It's a special USB cord that I ended up buying. It's an eight foot USB outlet. And I had to climb from the top of the, I had to climb from the top of the, the module case. I had to get a ladder and I had to be creative and run the cord through the stick. It was a pain in the ass. And that's what I mean by future proofing, where I didn't know when I had installed these that I would need outlets. And here's the thing, I suspected I had suspected that I may need outlets in other parts of the uh, of the chambers. I was so paranoid about not having these outlets built into these module cases that I I preloaded an outlet uh, where uh, right here I'll, I'll do a quick cut here uh, I uh, outlet right here and I ended up um, exhausting the outlets like within the first month where I was running USB power sources to. Uh, to, to, to the black light uh, and to the marble light box. So I quickly ran out of light boxes. Now the black lights, the, the black lights, I did pre-wire them while I, was, while I was installing because I knew you have to plan this. This is what I'm talking about. You have to plan this stuff ahead. I knew that I was gonna create a black light sensitive light because it takes six months to receive these module cases. So I was able to sit down, plan, all right, I'm gonna build a, a black light box so that, because it looks like Hot Toys is leaning towards the, the, the whole neon Tron Iron Man. So I'm gonna create a specific chamber so that the uh, fluorescent iron suits will pop and shine. Waiting six months for this. And you're probably saying, well, Denobi, what's the big freaking deal? What is the big deal about waiting six months when you pre-order the module case, right? The problem, the problem is, well, for me anyway, you're not exactly sure how many module cases you're gonna need. And because they do sell additional shelves and so forth, you're not able to anticipate everything ahead of the future. So for example, I knew that uh, uh, through my planning that I would get two sets of module cases, but I wasn't sure if the amount of Maju cases here that I purchased would be enough to fulfill my needs. I got it, I quickly filled it up, and I'm like, shoot, this is not enough, I want more. I'm in love with the Maju cases, uh, and now I have an idea of the next set of Maju cases that I want. Well, now I have to wait six months to, um, to fulfill 
my plan in because I thought this sized module case would be enough. And that becomes mm -hmm that becomes a little bit annoying. That to me feels like a con because now I have to wait another six months to fully get the room the way I want to. And here's the kicker. I ordered another set of module cases and now I feel that I did not order enough. So I'm ordering my, my module cases in sections as I'm slowly transforming the room and, I have, and I'm forced to wait six months uh, for additional shelves and additional module cases. And that can be a little bit frustrating. That could be a little bit frustrating. On top of that too, um, their website, they're very, they do provide updates, uh, you know, bless their hearts are really good, but they also are known for delays. And I thought that I would get my next set of module cases in December when I, or I'm sorry, at the end of Thanksgiving, where I had a week off where I can devote to rearranging the room because it takes a lot of work. And I got the email back like, well, your order's been delayed till February. Well, great. So between the time of November and now I'm waiting until February, um, I have ideas. My mind is constantly running gears. Pose the room. Now I've completely changed it. Well, no, now I don't want to do this. I need these cases so that I can kind of, I need to get my cases so that I can stop the gears in my head because I constantly, um, in, I'm in a state of flux. I, there's certain things that I want to move, shift, and so forth. And the longer I wait, I keep changing my mind. So for me, that may not be a con for you, but it's a con for me. I ordered additional shelves. When the shelves came in like four months, because I needed a couple more shelves. And the shelves that I can add onto these are in the same six month boat. I'm like, well, so I ordered two shelves. Now I feel like I don't need them. I paid for them. I, they finally d delivered. I'm like, oh great. Well, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to do what I was going to do with the DeLorean or, or whatever. So now I have two additional shelves right now that are, are sitting in my garage. So that six month is it to me is, is a big con. I kind of wish the company would have a surplus sitting in their California warehouse or Long Island, wherever it is. So that way folks who have made the, the large investment into a module case. I'm like, you know what? I like it, but I want to add a couple more shelves here, here, and here. Uh, Brian, can I get those extra shelves? Well, okay, we'll put you in pre-order. You'll get them in six months. Well, fuck, we're like, Sh dude, I, I'm just, I need a couple more shelves. They're 60 bucks a pop, whatever it is, a hundred, whatever. So you're, you're letting me wait six months. And I just got back from Japan. I bought a lot of collectible stuff that I'm excited as a toy collector. I want to display. Now I've completely changed my mind. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And now I'm in a state of, of, of waiting because I don't want to go anywhere else now. I want to, I want to keep my collection uniformed with the cases. I love the cases, but that six month, I'm hoping maybe down the road, they will improve on it. Uh, what else? Um, another con, and this may not be a con for you if you decide to go with the Maju case, uh, because I live in Las Vegas, it's extremely dry here, and uh, the acrylic display cases do create a static feedback which constantly attract dust to the front. Now, it's not a deal breaker. To me, it's more of a pet peeve where every week or so I do walk in front of the Maju cases and I do grab my Swiffer dust brush brush here and I do have to end up swiping it back and forth. So if you live on the East Coast or in a humid area, you may get a different experience. But to me, that's a pet peeve. Um, that, that really is. But you know, playing advocate though, I uh, was also annoyed with the amount of dust that my detops would collect and the light would reflect off of it and it would drive me bonkers. At least with the black surface felt on the floor here, I don't see the dust. To me, ignorance is a bliss. If I don't see the dust or the dirt, I'm perfectly fine with it. With the detox and the glass surface, it would drive me bonkers. I live in a dry climate. Um, if I open up my windows during the winter time, dust does come in and would, and for some reason, the detox would always attract to it, would always be attracted to it. Again, that's, that's a desert condition. You may not experience that, but for me, it was with the detox. With these guys, the dust just clings to the front of the acrylic, and that's okay. Would have been nice to have a glass, but would have been extremely heavy and probably expensive. I'm fine with the acrylic. Um, the acrylics, another con too, but 
That being said, with most display cases, they do tend to reflect a little bit of light depending on where I position the camera, but I used to get the light reflection too from a Detoff or any other glass display. So I don't know, if, I don't think I would uh, call that a con. Um, oh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to another plus. I love, I love that you're able to maximize all the space. I, if you can see in the back right here, I am able to use the top of the module cases because these things are built solid. This is some reinforced aluminum bars or something. These are, are really strong. Now the top of the module cases are still that thin wood, but uh, for 60 bucks I ran to Home Depot, uh, got the measurements and I did add some additional thin plywood on top to reinforce it. And you're able to get additional space on top of it. So that to me was um, a, a big plus. That was a big plus. So um, hopefully, well, I, I guess I provided some some positives, and I guess I provided some cons. I don't know what else uh, I can think of, other than the word of the video is future proofing. Is really, if you're going to make this investment, you really have to sit down and really imagine what you're going to use it for. I should have. T I was so excited to get them. I should have taken my time and added outlets. Or, or hidden additional USB plugs or outlets into the module cases. Now, the next set of module cases, which is, um, I did get an email, and uh, it's, it's crazy we're talking about delays, because I did get an email from module cases just a couple days ago, that my shipment, my second shipment of module cases has been delayed. So, that being said, uh, I've already changed my mind how I'm going to use them. I have probably about 20% of my collection right now is not being displayed because I thought I would have gotten this second phase of module cases that's been that I thought was I would get in November that's not been that I was told was going to arrive uh, end of January early February and it looks like it may be the end of February early March now and that that's that's a little bit annoying that to me because I'm pretty sure the way my mind works that I'm gonna end up changing my mind, like, well, now I'm gonna rearrange certain things and so forth. Uh, and that could be a little bit frustrating. Uh, so I hope this helps. Uh, if you decide to uh, go the module case uh, route, and uh, yeah, I hope I was able to provide some insight into what I, to how I feel about it. In the end, I still love the module cases. I really do. I. It was, it was, to me, it was always about the classy wow factor. Most hot toy collectors, we spend so much money on this stuff and, and to properly display it is, is really, really important uh, to me anyway. And, um, but yeah, other than making sure that you future proof your display, making sure that, look, are you going to change your mind? Are you always going to keep collecting hot toys? Because if you're not going to keep collecting hot toys, you want to make sure you get the right size um, add outlets. I'm going to tell you right now, hide or, or build USB plugs into these things because you don't know if you're going to need a power source because once these things are, once these cases are built, it weighs a ton. You're not going to be able to move it. There's just no way. These things, there's just no way you're going to be able to move it and get to the back of the wall. My two outlets in the back have been maximized and even if I wanted to add another plug back there, I couldn't. So, that being said, I love the cases, and uh, just do your research and future-proof. See ya.